الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وأهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهرا أن طهرا بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وإذ قال إبراهيم رب جعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق آله من الثمرات من من آمن منهم بالله واليوم الآخر قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم أضطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا بجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن زريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللہ جل جلاله سیز وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَسَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا Oh my holy prophet remember the time when we made بیت اللہ شریف a center for the people for the human being وَأَمْنًا and place of security and the sanctuary وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمُ مُصَلَّى and take the standing place of the platform of Ibrahim for a place of prayer وَأَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ and we enjoined Ibrahim and Ismail والسلام, to purify and sanctify my home for the people circumambulating and doing the ethikaf and genuflecting and prostrating. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلَ هَذَا بَلَدَا And remember the time my holy prophet when Ibrahim والسلام, requested Allah to make this, this city a peaceful city, a city as a sanctuary, make this city a sanctuary, وَرْزُقْ آلَهُ مِنَ السَّمَرَاتِ and provide the resident of this town with the living of the fruit, مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَلِيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And I mean to say that those resident who believe amongst them with Allah, in Allah and the day hereafter. قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُوا قَلِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and whosoever commits infidelity even then 
I shall give him a chance for a short time of the life. Summa adatharruhu ila azabin nar. Then I compel him to the punishment of the fire. Then I drag him to the punishment of to the chastisement of the fire. Wa bi'sal masir and what a bad abode. What a bad abode this is. Wa izyar fau Ibrahim al qawaid min al bayt wa Ismail. And O oh my holy prophet, remember the time when Ibrahim may grace and peace of Allah be upon him, along with the wife Ismail Ali Musallat was raising the walls of Kaabatullah Sharif. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. And both of them requested, O oh my O oh Overlord, accept this humble service to you. Inna ka anta samiul alim. Verily, you are only the of hearing, all hearing and all knowing. Rabbana vajjalna muslimayn ilakaba min zurriyyatina ummatam muslimatan lak. O our Lord, make us submissive to you and to your service and make a group of our offspring submissive to you as well. وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلِيْنَا And show us the way of the liturgy, the devotion, the worship. Manasik is plural number of mansak. Mansak is a mastare mimi, which, is, which can be called hasil mastar in Persian, Farsi, uh, Urdu. Manasikana and show us the ways of the worship, the devotion وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا and be kind to us إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ and only you are the forgiving most kind and most merciful this is the verbal translation of the passage I recited before you here Quran says O my holy prophet remember the time when we made this house a center for the people and security and we asked the people to take the platform of Ibrahim والسلام, for a place of prayer up to here I have explained in the previous lecture here Quran says وَأَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ أَنْ تَحِرَا بَيْتِ and we enjoined Ibrahim والسلام, and Ismail والسلام, may grace and peace of Allah be upon both of them to purify my house means since they were to build that house and this is a natural thing that the person who builds some things he gets that keen interest in that place and he has a keen interest to look after him. The people who get something in the legacy, in the inheritance, they don't care for the importance of that place. This is why this is most advisable according to Islamic ideology that the persons who build up the mosque, they are the more deserving person to look after the, uh, the mosque and other liturgical places because when Ibrahim والسلام, and Ismail والسلام, they completed the building of Kaaba Sharif, then the maintenance of Kaaba Sharif, Baitullah Sharif was also obliged for them to look after. So the background is this Kaaba Sharif is Imam Abdul Karim Sharistani writes in his book Kitabul Milal Man Nihal that this uh, Kaaba Sharif was built up for the first time by Adam, may grace and peace of Allah be upon him. So that was a central place to worship. But Kaaba Sharif is a direction of prost prostration and Kaaba Sharif is not a place for which one is prostrated, for which one prostrates because it is only Allah for whom one is duty bound to prostrate. This is direction of prostration but the 
Sijda, the prostration is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the previous religions, the prostration for the respect was lawful, permissible for, uh, for, the, uh, for the other people to prostrate in front of the holy persons, just like Fakharru uh, lahu sujada, the brothers of and uh, other family members of Joseph, may grace and peace of Allah be upon him, they prostrated in front of Joseph. That prostration was just for sake of the respect, for sake of the preservation of the dignity. But it's in this Sharia, the prostration for the respect was totally prohibited according to the research scholar of Muslim world. Uh, the prostration for the respect is not a bare or complete or conclusive, uh, conclusive infidelity, but possibility of infidelity is there. Therefore, this should be avoided just like the totally prohibited things are avoided. This is a principle where there is a possibility of infidelity, so that should be avoided just like proper infidelity. With the result that the Muslims are not allowed to, pro to prostrate in front of anybody, including the Prophet, the companions, the, the holy persons. The prostration is always exclusively for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibrahim and Ismail were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify the Kaaba Sharif. Here, Litaifina wal Aqifina wal Rukai Sujud. These are the main four fundamental purposes for which the Kaaba Shiv or any other holy places are built up. Quran says, You will have to purify it, to clean it for the circumambulating people. Circumambulation is, is Tawaf. Tawaf e Baitullah is called circumambulation. The people who wants to go there to circumambulate around Kaaba Sharif, that Kaaba Sharif and that area should be purified uh, for this very purpose. This is why one is not allowed to take the shoes which are mostly used in the streets, the toilet, they are mostly impure, so that impurity can be caused to the ground of Kaaba Sharif. Therefore, Muslim should not go there with the shoes because the possibility of impurity is there. And I saw many people going there with their shoes which are mostly used in the toilet as well, in the streets as well, and impurity of those shoes can involve the purity of that area. And once upon a time I came across a Maulana, I requested him to take off the shoes. He said that this is permissible. I said, Quran says, فَخْلَا نَعَلَيْكَ إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدِّسُ سُطْوَى Oh, uh, Moses, take off your shoes. And since it was darkness of the night, and the uh, season, was, uh, season was winter, uh, it was extremely cold in that area, and there was jungle as well, uh, most uh, Probably his feet were, in, were being endangered by the thorns or by the other harmful uh, articles. So therefore it was curious and strange for, the, for Moses' grace and peace of Allah be upon him. He wanted to take off the shoes, but being a human being, he wanted to know the reason. Quran says, Inna ka bil wadil muqaddis shitwa. So, Innaka is mostly uh, started uh, with Inna when the sentence is parenthetical sentence. Parenthetical sentence are mostly started with Inna. And this is called Jumla Mothrizar Jumla Mustanifa. So this is mostly answer to the understood question. There was an understood question that the weather was very uh, very uneven and it was the winter season and it was darkness a night of Tur Sharif that was very uh, very dangerous 
because of the uh, poisonous insects as well, thorns as well, and the sharp stones as well. So such a things were found there. Therefore, it was not appropriate for one to take of the shoes. Allah Kareem, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala rationalized and showed the cause of taking of the shoes. Allah said, "Inna ka bil wadil muqaddis sitwa." You will have to take of the shoes because you are in the area which is called Valley of Thwa, and that is a sacred place. In the Kabil Wadil Mukaddas, Mukaddas was a quality of that valley. When fine Natharatubal Hukme Alal Vasve Yusharbe Illi Yati Lahu, so this order was imposed on the quality of Takdis means. That uh, uh, order of the taking of the shoes was on account of the uh, sanctity and the dignity and the reverence of the place. So it was proved that where there uh, is a reverend or a holy place, taking of the shoes would be ne- necessary. This is called the Lala Thunnas according to Islamic jurisprudential uh, terminology and. Uh, in english that would be called ratio dasi dendai means here the order was imposed on the quality and when an order is imposed on the quality that quality is a cause of the order so whenever cause of an order is found out so that order is not confined to that place but wherever that cause is found that order will be would be imposed means wherever the sacredness or holiness of a place would be found the taking of the shoes would be imposed on this very ground so when wadiye tuwa was muqaddas was sacred was holy therefore moses was asked to take of the shoes so we can easily understand that the kaaba sharif as a sacred place on account of that very reason one is asked by allah subhanahu wa taala to take of the shoes so lit taifin an tahira baiti al taifin when uh, ibrahim and ismail were asked to purify and to sanctify kaaba sharif so it means that from very beginning this idea was included in the respect of kaaba sharif that everybody should try to purify it and to sanctify it and to avoid to cause any dirt or any filthiness in this area therefore all of the muslims should abide by the regulations that whenever they go to kaaba sharif they should take of their shoes just to keep the uh, just to keep the sacredness of kaaba sharif and when the dirt the rubbish are also a cause of dirtying the kaaba sharif so the infidelity the paganism the worshiping of the idol is really were there with the strong reason to be called the filth because the shirk the infidelity is really a uh, one of the highest and highest cause of the dirtiness of a place therefore ibrahim will assad sam and ismail was also was asked to keep to keep it away from the uh, physical dirt as well and from the ideological dirt as well and from practical dirt as well wala aqifina and whosoever tries to make a thikaf there this should be purified for those people as well and waruka is plural number of ruku ruku means to bow down so this is called genuflection in english genuflection and verb is genuflect so for the genuflecting people whosoever tries to bow down in front of allah the place should be kept very pure sanctified clear and the reverence of the place should be observed was sujood and for the people sujood is plural number of sajid means the person who are prostrating in front of allah 
because every prostrating person is duty bound to to put seven organs of his body on the on the ground two feet the toes of uh, at least eight toes of the feet should touch the ground in the prostration and the two knees while kneeling on the knees one is duty bound to put the knees on the ground and two hand and from nose up to the forehead these are seven organs which are to be placed in uh, on the ground and this is the most nearness to allah subhanahu wa taala shah abdul haq muhaddis delhi rahmatullah alai writes in his book lamat ut tanqi shara mishkatul masabi he says that if there is a question what is the time for human being to be the nearest to allah and no nearness to allah is possible uh, for for anyone to be more than this position means when a person is in prostrating he is in the nearest place to allah subhanahu wa taala he says that when a person is a king he is promoted as a sovereign of the country and he gets a crown he puts on uh, on the forehead and when a person gets certain eminence that is shown on the the crown of a person and when a person stands on the ground ground is the lowest article in the world which can be used by the human being when he spits he spits on the ground when he urinates he urinates on uh, on the ground and when he makes easy he makes easy on the ground it means that the earth is the lowest thing in the universe and when a person intends the prayer he puts his, his thumbs on the lobes of the ear and he fastens the hand just like a person is arrested he says that oh my allah there is no need for me to be arrested by anyone else i arrest myself in front of you and i touched my my ear just to show my penitence in front of you and when he goes to the earth he shows that oh my lord the best thing of my body i put on the lowest creature that is a ground and i cannot go beyond the ground so this is why that a human being is very near to allah in the case of prostration and it is necessary for a prostrating person to observe that all of the places where he puts his organs on the ground that should be pure and neat neat and pure and clean so this is why this duty was imposed by allah subhanahu wa taala to two prophets it means that the maintenance of the mosques is not a common job but it was uh, uh, it, it was imposed to the prophets the person who is top most senior in the universe after muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was obliged to keep the sanctity and the purity of kaaba sharif it means that this is not a common job once upon a time nabi kareem alaihi wasallam was asked about the dower money of the huran e bahshti means the wives which are going to uh, to be married to the paradisical people nabi kareem alaihi wasallam said ikhrajo ikhrajul kamamate min al masajid mahur hur al in means the dower money of the beautiful women of the paradise is just to take out the rubbish from the mosques mean the cleanliness the purity and uh, and the sanctity of the mosque is a, a really uh, dower money for the women which are going to be married to the paradisical people so this is very important therefore the worldly talk the rubbish talk the rubbish type of activities should not be practiced in the mosque the uh, the teaching of the children is lawful because that is uh, from the family of zikrullah and doing the prayers also 
the same purpose for which it was built up and all of the sermons which are given in the mosque that is also lawful and uh, very suitable because when Ibrahim والسلام, was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azin fin nas wil hajj that very area was used to, uh, for, for the calling and azan is also made in that very area so these are the items which are exercised by the Muslims in the area or adjacent to the mosque they are included in the family of Zikrullah and those place was maintained and managed by the prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلَ هَذَا بَلَدًا هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنَا and remember my holy prophet the time when Ibrahim والسلام, requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala O oh my Lord make this city a secure city sanctuary means the, the peace of this area should not be breached should not be violated by anyone and once upon a time when Abra came there and wanted to attack Kaaba Sharif and to demolish it so the the sky larks was sent down to to fight against him and they bombarded the the pebbles and they they came to the to the helmet and the helmet was broken into two pieces then the same pebbles reached their skull and skull was split into two pieces even the body was also split into two pieces the hauda uh, of that elephant was also pieced into two pieces and the body of the elephant was also broke into two pieces so all of the persons who came there to demolish Kaaba Sharif they, they were killed by the sky locks only one person was saved was, was rescued by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, he was called Abu Yaksum and that was not uh, for the, the, he was not uh, rescued by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for his personality but that was an, uh, an additional evidence to the fact that this happened nearby Kaaba Sharif when he went there back to the Yemen and he reported this total matter to the Yemenite people then that Yemen was a, uh, a colony of the Negus Negus means the king of the Ethiopia Abyssinia Abyssinia or Ethiopia the king of that area is called Negus which is called Najashi in Arabic he wanted to meet him to meet with him and submit the report which happened uh, nearby Kaaba Sharif when he went there that one Ababil one Ababil the plural number of Ababil is Ubul but Ubul is not used that Ababil uh, followed him and pursued him until he explained all of the things in front of the king and when he came back the sky lark began to uh, began to bomb him and he was also uh, made uh, he was changed into the pieces as the other people as the other member of his community were bumped and changed into into pieces he was smashed to the air in the eye of uh, Negus and he the Negus was highly impressed by by that event because it was not possible for a sky lark to bum the elephant or the person and with the same bum or person everything uh, should have been broken into pieces so this was totally abnormal and after a long time when he came to know in those very days Nabi Karim was born he, he came to the conclusion that uh, it was not done on account of Kaaba Sharif because in the reign of Yazid Kaaba Sharif was was stoned was stoned to demolished it was badly violated and in addition to that the Nebuchadnezzar Nazar he attacked Bethel Maqdash Sharif and everything was was demolished 
but there was no any bombardment by the sky larks but when he uh, abra went to mecca sharif to demolish mecca sharif he was badly penalized and his personality was badly crashed and nothing was left over so one can easily conclude that such a things did not happen at the time of demolishing of kaaba sharif in the reign of yazid or in the uh, in the reign of nabushadnezer what was the reason and imam e bihaqi rahmatullah alaihi writes in his book the lailu nubud which is short is one in the uh, second volume page number 11 he says that according to one of the reports nabi karim alaihi salatu wassalam was born on the same date when abra had come there to attack kaaba sharif it means that this was done an account of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is why quran says alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka oh my holy prophet don't you see how your lord treated the people of elephant he had did not allah did not said alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbul kaaba didn't you see that how the rab of kaaba sharif treated uh, treated with the people of the elephant here allah subhanahu wa taala did not attribute himself to kaaba sharif but he attributed himself to muhammad rasulullah sallam it means that allah subhanahu wa taala did not punish them as lord of kaaba sharif but allah subhanahu wa taala punished them as a lord of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so therefore this kaaba sharif was made aminan so one can see that when it was amin when it was sanctuary so it was not should be it should not have been demolished it should not have been violated by the creature so that was not an amre takwini it was not a, a predestined by allah subhanahu wa taala that was a practical matter which was imposed by allah subhanahu wa taala that such a thing should not have been done by any person in the world but human being are very able which violated the order of allah and the other creature just like uh, just like the eagles the the lions or the wolf or the other beast they don't violate because there is a tradition in darmi sharif jild number volume number 2 page number 11 imam darmi rahmatullah alaihi when nabi kareem alaihi salatu wasalam was going to somewhere and during the way uh, he happened to meet with the people who were complaining about their their camel he was not that camel was not letting them come inside they requested nabi kareem alaihi salatu wasalam to uh, to sort out certain a certain solution to that problem nabi kareem alaihi salam went there and camel uh, put the bouth on the feet of muhammad rasulullah sallam and nabi kareem alaihi salam uh, uh, put the rain in the nail of uh, in the nose of that uh, that camel and all of the people were very, really very surprised and they asked nabi kareem alaihi salam why that camel was not rebel to him as it was rebel to their to his own master he said nabi kareem alaihi salam samaj reported by darmi sharif volume number 2 page number 11 he says that nabi kareem alaihi salam told the companion that all of the uh, all of the creature are very obedient and submissive to me except the rebel human being and the rebel jinn mean these two type of creature two family of creature the rebel human beings and the rebel uh, jinnat they are they they mostly launch the mutiny against me and they wage wage the war against me but all of the other creature are without any exception without exception of any individual of them all of them of my my submissive to me and my my obedient they obey my order so according to that one this uh, aminan was a 
a duty of human being as a a uh, a law of sharia just like a person is ordered to do the prayer he do he may or may not do but this is his option but as an order it was imposed by allah subhanahu wa taala but that is called hukm e sharia not hukm e takwini means all other creature are bound to the order of takwin but human being and jinnat are addressed by the order of the shri order of the queen and of order of the shri are can be differentiated when one has no option that is amr takwini just like the moon was ordered to rise up in the morning in the in the night and to and, and to set in at a proper time and it is order for the sun to rise up in the morning and to set in in the, in the evening so these are amri takwini but as for ang human being is concerned go to the hajj this is an order but not amri takwini but this is amri tashrihi as amri tashrihi this place is amin I mean, no one is allowed to violate the law or to breach the peace breaching of peace is totally prohibited from the uh, from the king to the to the labor from an in state subject up to the sovereign of the country and when nabi karim allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam waged a war there uh, at the time of conquest of mecca nabi karim allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it was permitted for me for a few hours to wage a war and after that it was prohibited as usual quran says warzuq alahu min as-samarat man amana minhum billahi wal yawm al-akhir means it was not by chance but it was a purpose purposely pray for ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam wish allah subhanahu wa taala to provide the total residents of mecca sharif with the livings of the food with the living of the fruit so this was request this is human nature that a person is always interested in the offspring just nabi karim allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, was interested in the uh, in the love for the family of the holy prophet kullu asalukum alayhi ajran illa al muwaddath fil qurba just like ibrahim allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh my lord this place is really uh, with the scarcity of water as well and there are no gardens now cultivated lands so therefore these people would be very fed up with this life therefore i shall request you to provide them with the living with the food of the fruits this is why whenever you go there the fruit of different currency without seasons are found there and so much variety of the clothes or the fruit or the food everything is found there this is a result of uh, the prayer of ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam so when there was no of suffering hazrat ismail alaihi salatu wasalam why ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam uh, did uh, prayer for his of suffering so this is natural one just like you and i are interested in the welfare and prosperity of our of suffering ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam being a human being he was also interested in the prosperity and welfare of his offspring therefore he said man amana minhum billah he specified the people who believes in allah he did not say only just my offspring should be provided with every type of fruit and they should be supplied with every type of and every variety of the fruit or food but he said man amana bihum billah since in the previous verses when he said wa min zurriyati qala la yanalu ahdi zalimin when the leadership of the main kind was going to be granted to ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam he requested allah subhanahu wa taala to grant the same leadership to the offspring of ibrahim alaihi salatu wasalam 
and Allah said, La yanalu ahdi zalimin. Allah uh, particularized and specified only the believers, only the obedient to the divine law, they would be granted the leadership of the human being. So Ibrahim al-Sassam easily understood that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted my, uh, my offspring uh, from the people who are not believer, only the believer would be granted the leadership. Similarly, this fruit, this uh, food of fruit would be granted only to the people who are believing in Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, according to Ibrahim al-Sassam, only the people who were truly believer and orthodox and with with accurate ideology and tenets and creeds, they were entitled to be granted the variety of beautiful and tasteful and tasty fruit of different countries. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qala wa man kafara fa ummati'uhu The leadership was a spiritual matter. Spiritual matter is not granted to the cruel people who are with the wrong ideology and wrong practice but as far as the worldly livings are concerned even the infidels are also entitled to be granted the variety of the fruit or variety of the food. Therefore one should not be deceived by the superficial value of the other people who think that the person who is a great wealth who is a abundance of the sources, he is really righteous person, just like certain countries are very advanced and very prosperous and their wealth and technology is very advanced and highly, uh, highly improved. So the Muslims are mostly, uh, mostly terrified from those people and they think that these are infidels and not believing in the in the Islamic doctrines, in the Islamic tenets and creeds, even then they are well improved. So Quran here says that as far as the physical and worldly wealth and prosperity is concerned, that would be granted to the even to the non-Muslims, to the infidels and to the pagans, to the idolaters. But as far as the spiritual leaders, leadership is concerned, that would not be granted to the deviated persons or misled peoples. Quran says, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَهُمْتِهُ قَلِيلًا So whosoever commits the infidelity or paganism or atheism, so we will enable him to enjoy the resources of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but for a short time. And the worldly life is really short time. And the next world life is a permanent everlasting perpetual and endless therefore quran says we shall give him a chance for a little while means in this world then we shall drag him to the punishment chastisement of the fire means this enjoyment of the life and facilities and prosperity of this life is not everlasting that would end with the last breath of the life but when he goes to the next world we shall drag him to the fire even if he is a king of the country governor of the country multi multi-millionaire of, of the country he is a big landlord but on that time we shall evaluate the value of his belief and his practice if he is a believing person then his practice would be considered uh, if directly or indirectly he will go to the paradise and for a short time or a long time he would be penalized in 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 the hell but the punishment of hell for infidel is for humility humility and debasement and the punishment for the muslims on uh, on the judgment they that is for purification that is not for humility or debasement. The punishment for debasement or humility concerns with the infidels. Quran here says, O my holy prophet, when I compel them 
to to the uh, to the fire that time would be very very awful and that abode is very bad abode that residence means the residence of hell is very awful very awkward and very very painful therefore every a rational person should try to avoid with the proper ideology and by the proper character this is the end of my lecture today in english language inshallah in the next uh, next lecture i shall give the details uh, for the coming passage wa ma alaina illa al balagh al mubin wa akhir dawana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin assalatu wassalamu ala rasulil karim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin rahmatullahi